The Raptors come up just short against the Denver Nuggets because of Jokic, 110-109. I'm Randy Urban. Welcome to Raptors Nightcap. Tonight, we're joined by Jack Armstrong, Leo Routens, and Paul Jones. Jack, this was a frustrating loss for me. Just talk about that last play. I mean, I know Jokic is playing under the net, but he literally felt like he came out of nowhere. Well, you know, he never comes out of nowhere because he doesn't move that fast. <laughs> True. But, uh, <laughs> he, he's a big man. He's a big man. And I thought the Raptors got a good look again. They got Fred Van Vliet on that fake one five screen the previous play. Uh, they got him again on the left side for a three, and it didn't go. But as we all know, a lot of times to win games late, uh, a lot of times it's the putback that wins it for you. And OG Ananobi did a great job getting to the weak side and had a chance, and Jokic just made a better play. Leo, did you think that – uh, like generally OG would try to dunk that, but do you think he just tried to get it on the glass real quick because he didn't know what time was there and how much time was left? Yeah. I mean, you're, you're the, the first instinct would be, Hey, going strong and try to worst case scenario scenario, get out, get a couple of free throws out of it. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I, the way he put it up, uh, I got the impression that he thought he had to get it there quickly. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you want to get it to the glass quickly. So if he does, if Jokic does touch it, uh, hopefully you get a goal 10. But uh, so it was just, uh, give, you know, give credit where credit's due. Jokic made a uh, spectacular play on that. And, uh, and remember, he missed two free throws, right? So yeah. he's going, yeah. like, I have to atone for this, right? I, I, I got to make, you know, do something uh, because, mm -hmm. I, you know, I just, blew, I just blew a couple free throws. So big play by him. Yeah, and, Randy, and Joe, I, Randy, I, I wondered, ahead. and I, I haven't had another look at it, but I wonder what OG's balance was like as well. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, sometimes you catch the rebound and – you know, he didn't really have the time. If he has time to gather and get his balance, OG's great going up. Like, he'll dunk those flat-footed. But mm -hmm. I, I think he was concerned about the time, and I wasn't sure that he had his balance. I mean, we'll take an, I'll take another look at it later. But, um, man, as Leo said, and, and Jack, just to reiterate, give Jokic credit. I mean, the guy, he, he probably can't jump over the Saturday paper. Uh, you, <laughs> you, you, might, you might time his 400 meters with a sundial. Uh, but he's seven foot. He doesn't shrink. I mean, he had a rebound where he was holding a guy off with one hand and put it in with his right hand. I, yeah. I, like, like he does that a lot. He does really. Yeah, good he at does it. it a lot because he, he's close to the basket. He's strong. I, I, I mean, I think he gets away with a foul on, in some occasions with it. But uh, you, you know, and here's the other thing too. And let's get this out of the way right now. From a personal standpoint, objectively. I really didn't think the Raptors got a great whistle tonight. I agree with that. I, 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 there was a goaltend on OG's reverse dunk by Jokic. No call. There were a couple of soft fouls by Toronto to give Denver shots. Like just, you know, Trent's knocked down. It's a steal, a bucket. Yeah, OG, drives, gets, gets, OG drives, gets hit. No foul. And then you get a touch foul on Jokic. The same thing at the other end. Uh, so let's get that out of the way. I didn't think it was a great whistle. That being said, you still have to make plays to win the game. Mm -hmm. and Jack, you look at Jones, when you got, uh, what was it, 18, uh, second 18 uh, points in the paint in the, in the second quarter, 16 in the third quarter, when you're getting into the paint like that, you generally that's going to translate into opportunities at the free throw line, and it really yes. didn't. Mm -hmm. Jack, did it feel like the Raptors just ran out of gas a little bit in that fourth quarter? It seemed like they were laboring at times. Um, offensively? I, I think they lay a little bit, uh, but they've been in so many of these close games. They, they've really done a good job of, uh, of, of making plays when they've needed to. I, Denver's defense was good. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. think they, uh, Composo and uh, well, you know, all those guys that were out there, Barton, I mean, they really played uh, with great intensity tonight. Yeah. They had great yeah. spirit on their bench and enthusiasm. Uh, this was a heck of a road win for them. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is the unfortunate part of not having a crowd tonight. Uh, you know, you talk about the officials where the crowd can really get on the officials a little bit, get your team going. Uh, but, I, you know, I just thought the Raptors tonight played against a good team and give the other guy credit. I thought their defense down the stretch made it pretty difficult for the Raptors to score easily. And the Raptors have done a really good job this year of, of getting really good shots. I thought for the most part they did. And then in the fourth quarter, those shots came a little tougher. Mm -hmm. Randall, can I give you a number? Yeah. 
Raptors now third, going not including this game, but before this game, they are third in the NBA in one possession games with a minute to go. Up three, down wow. three, a minute to go. Toronto tonight was their 23rd game. That's third in the NBA. And they had 12 wins going into tonight, which is also third in the NBA. So they mm. make their money in close games. This is not like, oh, you know, we just – like, you know, like a Golden State or a Phoenix that doesn't have those. These guys know how to play in these games. And as, as you know, to, to Jack's point, I thought Denver's defense made them work. And they had good looks. They just couldn't knock them down. Mm -hmm. And that type of stat and that type of, uh, you know, awareness in those moments is only going to help them come playoff time. But, Leo, just going back to Jack's point about the fans, and I don't want to harp on this and be be too, you know, negative about it because it is what it is. But – there are moments in the game that the fans really can change the momentum of the game. And there was one of them today in the fourth quarter. And, you know, the Raptors are going up by six per and eight. You would know that at that moment, at that arena, the fans would be into it, going crazy. And that's a chance for them to push it to 10, 12, 14, and possibly out of reach for the other team. Well, and the other team, remember, they're, they're in a second game of a back-to-back. -back, and if the exactly. crowd's going crazy, you get on a roll. Uh, it becomes emotional, um, an emotional roller coaster, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, – Hey, you know, Messiah said it. There's no other team in the whole league that's dealing with this. Nobody, mm -hmm. right? And and to play in front of you know 500 fans, uh, you know, it's it's uh, honestly it's not fair. It's discouraging. It's uh, it's frustrating. But unfortunately, it's the reality of what we're in. And and you know, keep our, keep our fingers crossed that uh, hopefully you know after the All Star break things will change and uh, there'll be some you know, full house again at some point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They have an impact, Randall. They, they, yeah. they, as like all the things that we talked about, they impact the officials. Mm -hmm. They impact the other team's coaching decisions when the lid is going, lifting off the place. You Great call point. a timeout just to settle them down, to calm your players down. Like there, there are all of those things that the, the, the energy from the crowd fuels the team. Just all of those little things that the, the, the invisible sixth man is missing in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Jack Pascal was amazing. Again, do you have any different words you could say about this guy right now? Yeah, I would say empowered. Yeah. Um, I, I see a guy that like has got the ball in his hands more than he's ever had it in his career. And I think he's really bought into the Draymond Green point forward uh, type stuff. And he's doing a lot more than Draymond Green does. I mean, he handles it a lot. He's like a point guard. I mean, right. they got Fred Van Vliet playing off the ball to two. I mean, so to me, I, I, I see a guy that's so empowered right now and so dialed into it that I think it's really boosting just how he plays in every facet uh, because he feels that respected. And, uh, you know, just it's, it's just really fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Leo, do you think the Raptors can continue to thrive without a seven footer or is that something you see them looking for when this buyout market happens? Well, I think you're always looking right. But you know, hey, there's, there's a hand, there's a handful of teams that it would be nice to have. It'd be nice yeah. to have, like I said, you got a Jokic, you got a Embiid, right? You got, you know, you, have, uh, you know, you play Milwaukee with their size. So you have certain situations where uh, it'd be nice to have that resource. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and not easy to find. Uh, and remember, you know, and again, I, I say this all the time. I give, I give the organization a lot of credit that they just don't throw bodies in. They just don't go out and get guys. If you don't fit, uh, not only now, but the kind of the long-term idea of what they're trying to do, they, they don't, they don't do it. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't compromise uh, what they're trying to uh, accomplish. Uh, especially, you know, and, but it's just not easy, right? It's not easy to find um, a big that can, it can be a difference maker uh, coming in at this stage, but you know, you can bet they're going to be scouring, scouring uh, the books to try to find one if they can. Yeah. Hey, hey Randy, can I, can I just follow up? I, I love yeah, what Jack sure. said a minute ago about Pascal. Um, where's all that talk about he can't be a number one guy now, right? Remember that all that chatter we heard last year, he could like people are like, oh, he's, he's not a number one guy. He's, he's more of a Robin than a Batman. Hey man, he's Batman and Superman right now. Mm -hmm. He gets that, he gets that ball into the paint 
and something good happens either A for him or B for a teammate on a kick out and a swing swing. Because if he gets single coverage in there, he's scoring. Mm -hmm. If a double team comes and he doesn't have a good look and he kicks it out from the paint after a paint touch, guys are getting open looks. And they are so concerned with him. Look at the play that Nick ran at the end of the game. It, it was like it was like a, the old illegal defense offense. They had four guys on one side of the floor. And mm -hmm. Fred goes sprinting across the free throw line. It's kind of a brush screen, kind of a, a slip and, uh, you know, as Sherman called it on the radio broadcast, a slip and slide. I, 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 I called it a, a slide and a, 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 slip and, a slip and dip. And Fred gets an open three. Why? Because they're so mm -hmm. concerned with the coverage on Pascal. And he distributes the ball. So there's no more of this talk that, oh, he can't be a number one guy. And he's just making things happen for him or his team. And it's all predicated on his ball handling and getting into the paint. Mm -hmm. Jack, this was, I thought, an important game to get because it really, when I looked ahead, I thought, okay, they could get New Orleans. They can get Minnesota. Then you're going into the break with 11 wins during the dog day, 11 wins in a row during the dog days of the NBA. Well, no game's easy. And yeah. uh, New Orleans made a good trade and they're, they're playing better. And Minnesota, if the season ended today, they'd be in the playoffs. So we're playing. So uh, none of these games are going to be easy. Uh, but to me, uh, you want to get it, but nonetheless, you got to respect your opponent too. This is a team playing without Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. That's had a really good year. Mike Malone's doing a good job with them. And I thought they competed hard tonight. You lost to a good opponent tonight. And there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, you know, even though they lost, uh, they're right in the game. They got a chance to win to Jonesy's point about, you know, the clutch minutes and the situational basketball. You know, I, I like where they're at, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you're not going to win every game, but you're going to learn from it. And you're going to learn uh, again, what, what, where you're at. I mean, I, I think I was encouraged with tonight was just to see Ken Birch play a little bit more minutes. Uh, that was a positive. And, uh, you know, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how things evolve with their rotation now that they've added a player in the trade that night. Mm -hmm. uh, Leo, real quick, uh, we ran out of time last show, and I wanted to ask this about uh, Houston's uh, Shen Jun. Just talking about uh, his little habit there before free throws where he's like kissing the ball or something, which I thought was pretty unusual. What's the most unusual habit you've seen on a basketball court at any level that you played in? You've probably seen a few things. You probably had a few no, I mean, things. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I think a routine is, is, is important, all right? Yeah. It's a routine for your free throw is important. Um, I don't know. I remember like Adrian Danley used to like look like he was squeezing the air out of the ball, uh, you <laughs> yeah. know, before he, yeah. before he shot it. But you know, I mean, whatever works for you. Right. It's yeah. uh, I just think your routine sh should incorporate some things you want to do in your shot, like bending your knees and getting a rhythm. Uh, but like I said, everybody's got their own thing and whatever works, go for it. What did you do Jet at free a. throws? Huh? What did you do at free throws? Anything sp special? Uh, I no, I did uh, two bounces. So it was a one, two, yeah. and on both bounces, I flex my knees. And on the second bounce, as my knees are flexed, I come into my shot. Mm -hmm. So it's one, two. And I'd always say to myself, over the front of the rim, because that's what I'm looking at, <coughs> hand in the basket. Because I don't want to think about the score, time, nothing. I want to think one, two, over the front of the rim, hand in the basket. That was my I routine. Like, I like that. Jones Randy, I missed. <laughs> 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 And you weren't a great coach. You always tell everybody, Jack, no. but you, you, you must be doing something right. Look at you. Well, I don't know. Ask my wife. I don't think I'm getting a, she's not saying too much uh, positive. It's Valentine's day on Monday. Maybe we'll see. We'll find yeah, out. Yeah, and, yeah. And don't forget the present. That's all. Don't yeah. forget. I already set the flowers. There you go. Jo Josie, jump in. What were you going to say? No, I, I, I was going to say some unusual things I've seen. Uh, they always ask Dirk what he yeah. said. Remember Dirk had a free throw routine where, and somebody said, "Is he, are you singing David Hasselhoff songs? Jeff Hornacek used to touch the side Over of his face. face yeah. and everybody asked him what that was for. He said, That's, that, that was saying hi to my kids. You yeah. know? So, uh, hey, whatever it is in your routine, you do it. If it's going to make you a better. Personally, uh, a sports psychologist taught me to take a shadow shot. And I, I think of the great free throw shooter, Steve Nash, our Canadian, never took the ball without doing his routine and a mm. shadow shot, visualized it going in 
and then said to the ref, okay, give me the ball now. So as, as Leo said, get your routine down. And that's, I wish I had a pre-shot routine with golf because I bowl so many shots. My routine changes every time. <laughs> All right, guys, I love it. But got to stop you there. Next game for the Raptors, Monday night against the New Orleans Pelicans. Tip off at 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you then.